Greetings everyone, Jonas Rep and I welcoming you in the fifth episode of the Power Platform Community Tool Series. If you have not watched the previous episodes, please check the complete playlist or link in the description of this video. In this episode, we will talk about how to use Fetch XML Builder in the Exarum Toolbox. So let's dive in. Let's start with the basic. What is a Fetch XML? Fetch XML is a proprietary XML based query language used to retrieve data from the Dataverse. Fetch XML is also used to define the views for the model driven apps and also some reporting capabilities. All queries are based in a single table. The root element is Fetch. Use the entity element to select the table the query retrieves data from. This snippet over the screen is an example of represent a simple Fetch XML query. This query returns name column of the first five rows from the count table using the logical name of the table to set the entity name attribute. Fetch XML Builder is a powerful tool used to create and execute queries against Microsoft Dataverse, Power Apps, and the Dynamic 365. It empowers users to build complex Fetch XML queries, investigate data, and even generate the code against that. If you are working with these platforms, it is a handy tool to have in your toolkit archery. Fetch XML Builders offers several features that make it valuable tools for working with Microsoft Dataverse, Power Apps, and the Dynamic 365. These features set of Fetch XML Builders has grown constantly over the last years, but the basic idea of a tool to easily build and test queries has never lost the focus. So we can easily see that we have tons of the features like query builders, visual query designers. We can preview the results before making the changes in the code. We can execute the query here only in the window. We can export to as a fetch XML and save it to a local or maybe the OneDrive location. Then we have a lot of the advanced features available there. We can convert the query, which implies with the C sharp code, maybe the PowerShell scripts and so on, or the CLI script. Then we can share the queries in the form of email or a link, something like that. And then we can also have a redo and undo functionality. So if by mistake, if we made some changes and which we don't need it, we can undo that one. Now our friends, Max and Mia, we know the co-workers in the Conto so. So Max took the role of the sales manager recently. And as a sales manager using the Dynamic 365, he want to analyze the account insight of his organization. The result will help him to identify the trends, prioritize leads, and allocate the resources effectively. Mia gave him a tip to use the Fetch XML Builder and ask him to follow up the demo by Jonas. You will now explain how to use the Fetch XML Builder. So over to you, Jonas. Okay, thank you. So I'll try to share how Fetch XML Builder is working in like three minutes. Hard to do, but give me a chance. Okay, so we start in the XRM toolbox. I'm here, I am now connected to my environment and then I just open this one. So this is basic how this tool is looking like. So we have to the left here, the query builder. So that's the core of this tool. How we build it instead of just sitting with notepad and trying to write the correct uh, XML for fetch. So in this case, we can just go to, we have a new, a query here and go to the one first sort of we should select a table or entity it's the same thing sort of but here we can add which uh, table we want to read read from there and we can just do a drop down and see there are well there are like hundreds or thousands of different tables and so on but we can search for it so i can search for these are all that's starting with my, my environment my my solution we can do like this, or what I'm normally, that's the first thing I do. I can actually use a, a short key, the control F, which is will flip it between showing the technical name and the display names. So if I just do, you can't see it because now I do a control F. Ta -da. Now we'll actually instead see it in the table, the names we know. So in this case, I should get my rocket, rocket like this, and after that, I'll, I can actually do an execute now and to get the result from this. So let's just do it. We ask for it and then we get a bunch of things here, all the columns and uh, everything are quite technical. We can actually also in the result, we can change to show it in the friendly name. It's a very much friendly name, but it's like the, the name I found for it. We can say here, 
in take the menu, the bottom menu for the friendly names. Now we see much more readable information in here. And, and now we have everything there. But of course, we should ask, actually do a bit more of the query builder to show what can we add here. Well, this is a, it's an, an hierarchy of the XML that's shown here. And in this case, I mean, the fetch is from the core, the building of it. And that has now, since the last release in, from um, April in 2024, we had a lot more features in here. So there are a lot more things that we can set there. Let's not just do it now. And this is the entity table. And then after that, we can add, okay, let me select which attribute, which column, which field I want to return. I can just set the name, but then I can set some more here. And oh, this is like the easiest way to do this. We have a designer also. If I, <clears throat> now we see the result is now in dim. It's a, we, well, we can hardly see what is in there because we have changed the query since last time we actually retrieved the results. So then I can just re get it back again. Then I see the name of the rockets and the name of the designers. And what we can do now is we can double click on a record in the result there. So I just double click and then it will open the actual record in Dynamics or the Power Platformer. So there's the Falcon 999 and so on. And the other way is that there are some um, some columns here that are have the underlined. That is because it's a related entity. And so this will open the, the designer is actually a contact. So if I open an Elon, Elon, we have to double click on that one. Then I get the contact instead of the rocket. Uh, just small features that makes it easier to use this. Use this. And uh, let me also show you how can I add more attributes that we want to return it. We can add the select attributes and I can see all of them here. I can say, okay, show me everything that's only on forms and uh, select all of those. Or I can, uh, okay, show everyone. And then I can say, well, I like my last name, which is the prefix. And I can say, choose all of those. And now I, I will get those uh, columns in the result. And uh, that's this is just a very small sort of look at how to create these uh, queries. And uh, what did it creating? It was actually creating fetch XML, which is an XML file. So we can go to the view here and just select fetch XML so we can see what it is. Okay, this is what was created: getting an entity with a bunch of attributes, and so it's very easy to find how do we actually create the queries from the query builder with a UI, and but we still get the actual fetch XML. And from here, you can use that to convert it to code or to just copy paste into Power BI or however, however you want, may want to use it. Also, I just want to show you what you can do with this. I created a query, very simple query, but I can save it. I can save it to a file, which is just a file on your disk, which is, which is a text file and with the XML. We can also say, save to a view. Then I can have to, I need to set it, it should be a system view or personal view. And then I can also set the name and so on. And if we should also include the actual layout of the result also. So in that case, we can add creating our environments through using the fetch XML builder. Can I, of course, also open views, open the file and so on. And one small feature that's the best thing for me is I have the repository, which is that when I can just easily, hey, this is a good query. I want to be able to, to find it next time I go back to this environment or when the next time I'm running the external toolbox, then I can just say, well, save this query. That was, and I can say, my rockets. Oops, like this, and then it is saved. So when I come back here later, then I will have that here. I don't need to take care of where is actually the file where I'm storing it and so on. It's just 
I mean, the tool knows it. It's in definitely, well, technically it's in the settings file under where are we storing the information from external toolbox. But now I can just get back to this one, my rockets. I did another one, another query, and I can run this one, and then I can just go to find another one and so on. So that makes it a lot easier to, to do it. And you can actually also share it, not only to me, but to other people. This is kind of fringe fun fe feature, but I think it's good to have here. We can say that, okay, show me as a URL or a HTML or a markdown. So we can use it in different ways um, and uh, to let it know if we should actually include the actual um, environment I was using here, which connection. So we can do this, we can test, uh, test run it. Uh, this requires that you have enabled the, I said during the settings for the Excel toolbox, it had to be open to actually take responsibility for this. Again, there's a lot of buttons you see here in the menu and so on. And uh, well, you just have to go and uh, go test and see how it works. And there are actually some uh, important settings. There are a lot of settings that we can do. And from here, we can all see, here this is the control F that I was talking about in the beginning. This is, should we do it in friendly names or not? And so on. A lot of more things to uh, do here. And I'll actually recommend that you also look at the release notes. For every release, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to document. I'm not best at documenting, but I have everything in here. And you should look at when we see something, something new is coming, just uh, go there and see what's happening. And finally, I'll just go to if there's something you feel is wrong, is into working it as it should, or if you have got new ideas of well, you, what should you more create? What would you actually do? Well, then we can give a feedback for it here, right here. Feedback for the FXM toolbox. You can do it for the XM toolbox as well, but that's in general way. This is for the tool I'm currently in. So if I do this, then I can just add a uh, title and add what you'd like to have, what we should uh, improve and so on. So I guess that is, I mean, I could be talking about this for hours and hours, but uh, I think that's enough for right now. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Jonas, for the wonderful demo. So I would request to audience that please subscribe to the channel, like and share the videos within the community. Also provide your feedback, which is really important in the comment section that what episode you want to cover next. Till that, have a great time and happy learning. Thank you. Thank you so much again. Take care.